Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video I will show you how to use Qt's MQTT library. Qt has MQTT library, but it is not available directly with open source Qt installation, that's why I decided to make a video tutorial on this topic. As a first step we will clone the Qt's MQTT library from their repositories, and after this I will show you how to build this library, and then I will show you how to install this library, and use this library in a simple Qt application. So, let's get started. If we do a simple Google search with the keyword QTM QTT repository, we will land on this page, and at the bottom of this page, the link is given to clone this repository. I will copy this link and then open the terminal. And in the terminal, I will use the command git clone hyphen b6.2.4 and then paste the copied link. Here 6.2.4 is the version of Qt installed on my laptop. If you have some other version of Qt installed, then you can specify that tag in this command. The Qt's MQTT source code is cloned, and the next step is to compile these source files to generate the Qt's MQTT library. Compiling the source files to generate the library is the most important step. My Qt is installed inside the opt folder on my laptop. It is desirable to have proper environment variables set while building Qt projects from the command line. My preference is to have a script on my laptop with all the relevant variables. So now I will make a script file with all the required environment variables used for building the project as shown here. First I will specify the Qt version. Second I will specify the Qt installation path. Next step is to specify the CMake binary installation path. Next step is to specify the QMake binary installation path. Next step is to specify the CMake prefix path. Next step is to specify the Ninja installation path. And the last step is to update all this information in the path environment variable. Save this file and close the editor. Now I will load this script file from the terminal as shown here on the screen, and we get a lot of errors. The reason for these errors is due to the reason we have used spaces in the script file, and removing those spaces should fix this issue. Let's execute the same command again, and this works fine this time. Note, we have to execute this script every time whenever we open a new terminal session. If you want to avoid this, you can run this script file at startup. The environment setup is done, and now we can build the Qt project from the command line. First, go inside the clone directory using the cd command as shown on the screen. And then create a new directory named build using the makedir command. And then go inside this build directory using the command cd build. And then we will run the Qt configure module command. This command will generate the build environment. And then we will use the cmake build command to build the project. As you can see the project builds successfully, and the libraries are also generated. And then the final step is to install these generated libraries, and this can be done using the cmake install command. Here we get an error, and the reason is my Qt installation directory is inside the op directory, and to write anything to this directory, we must use sudo before any command. So let's try again by adding sudo to the same command. And as you can see this work fine. In the next step, we will install the mosquito broker on our laptop, and test a simple MQTT application developed in Qt. First I will install the mosquito broker from the terminal. The command to install the mosquito broker is sudo apt install mosquito. And sudo apt install mosquito clients. Once the mosquito broker is installer, I have to start the mosquito service, and this can be done using the command sudo service mosquito start. Similarly the mosquito service can be stopped using the command sudo service mosquito stop. I will start the service again else the publish and subscription of topics will not work. Now, let's test the publish and subscription of topics, for that I need two terminals, one will publish the topic, and the other will subscribe to the topic. 
The left hand side terminal is used to subscribe the topic hello, here hyphen h is used to specify the host name which is localhost, and hyphen p is used to specify the port which is 1883, and hyphen t is used to specify the topic which we wanted to subscribe. Similarly the right hand side terminal is used to publish the topic hello with some messages or information. And once this command is executed, we can see the published topic on the subscribe terminal. Now I will show you the same thing using a simple application made using Qt, where the Qt application will send the topic, and the Mosquito broker running on my Ubuntu laptop will receive it. The MQTT repository which I have cloned contains many example projects, and in this video, I will be using one of the projects to demonstrate this demo. Let's open the simple client project in the Qt creator. and then build the project by clicking on the hammer icon. The project will build successfully because I have already installed Qt's MQTT library. Now press the play button, this will run the application as shown here. In the host name I will enter the local host and in the topic, topic slash hello is specified as this is the topic to which I am subscribing from the command line terminal. Press the connect button, else you will also get the error, can't publish, and once connect button is pressed, the message can be sent by pressing the publish button, and these messages will appear on the right hand side of the screen, where the command line terminal is waiting for the published messages. That's all from this video tutorial, the reason why I made this video is because in the future, I am working on a simple project where we can control the devices and get the status of some sensors using ESP32, and all this is done using the MQTT protocol, and this all is done using the Android application, and to develop that Android application, I will be using the Qt. If you like this video, press the like button, and also don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.